Nigeria's president of the Senate, Hamid Lawan, speaking there. In the meantime, various stakeholders across Nigeria have been reacting to the decision of the two chambers of the National Assembly to approve different percentages for the trust fund dedicated to host communities in the recently passed petroleum industry bill. Most of that conversation has come in the form of sustained criticism by the general Nigerian public and particularly been met by total rejection by individuals as well as groups from the oil-rich Niger Delta region. And for further interrogation of this matter, we're now being joined here in Lagos by Comrade Joseph Eva, a foremost Niger Delta activist and coordinator of the Job Monitoring Group. Welcome to the program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, let me begin by asking you what may be a simplistic question to what is turning out to be a complicated situation. The host communities are demanding 10% revenues or nothing less uh, from the operating expenditure stated in the PIB as proposed. Why is this so? Well, even the 10%, because we want to also show that we are Nigerians. If not, we are demanding for 50%. We are to demand for 50%. Like what happened in the First Republic before now. But to prove that we are all Nigerians and you should be your brother's keeper, we are requesting for 10%. Even for, that, for us to even use that to manage our environment is a problem. Yet these people are insulting us. The National Assembly, since the coming of this democracy, this is the worst insult. The first person to try an insult on us was former President Obasanjo, who came, with, came up with an uh, 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 offshore dichotomy, off dichotomy to insult us. We confronted him. We confronted him. Our leaders in the national conference that Obasanjo organized walked out of the conference, and the conference collapsed. So today, we are surprised that our people in the National Assembly we don't know what, we are waiting for them. We ask them to come home. Come home, we have been calling their lines, all the lines off, 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 off. Well, we want them to come and tell us what happened, that these people are insulting our heritage and they are quiet. We are waiting for our children. We will never accept that. Those who are looking for trouble in this country, we have the capacity to handle them. 3%, 5% is an insult. We have nothing to tell our children in the next 100 years if we maintain that insult. Comrade Eva, let me ask you, because there are critics who say the Niger Delta region or the oil producing states have not been able to justify 13% derivation, a special ministry dedicated to the region, a special commission, the NDDC dedicated to the, to the region as well. So what will a 10% uh, difference of revenue, what will a 10% or 3 to 5% difference make anyway in the region? We will not accept that shy this blackmail from anybody in this country. They are not making use of 13%. They are not using the Minister of Niger Delta. I, is it the Niger Delta people that appointed the Minister of Niger Delta? Who is joining our oppressors to oppress us the more? Is it the Niger Delta people? You can't bring any people, any other type of people, come and manage and rubbish what you give to us, then you now blame us. Should we behave like the days of Kensariwa to go and attack those people you give to us who are also joining our oppressors to oppress us? They have no moral right to come and tell us that they give us 13%, you are not managing it, you are not doing this and that. Who will listen to that? We are past that stage. We are saying that the money for the communities now, it is the communities now that this money should go. Even some of us, we just felt that. For example, because of environmental problem, I took a bachelor government to court. We have environmental problem. It's not even the money. The military government of Abacha gave out a contract to drag the river Nanja. I said, no, we will not allow it in our generation. I went to court through my lawyer, Femi Falana. Outside that, we mobilized. Abacha told us all water and land belong to government. I told him all water and land belong to government is on a piece of paper. He job people are the owner of their waters. And if we go to court, you disrespect the court. We have a beso or sopela They are waiting for you inside the creek. Come into the creek and manage us. What type of insult is that? And I will stop it. No dredger will come to worry area and dredge from worry down to Baro. 
Our sea ports are dead. Brutu port is dead. Coco port is dead. Sapla port is dead. Bo uh, Bonik port is dead. Uh, uh, Nebe port is dead. All our ports are dead. You are not interested in reviving our ports like a papa port in Lagos. You, are, you want to dredge. You have built a seaport in Baru and Abuja. You want to dredge from Wari so that container will come from London. I stop it during the military. Comrade Eva. You cannot allow that and insult our children. Comrade Eva. Yes. Uh, not to seem to be uh, pouring salt on the wound, but um, there was an argument made only this week by someone on that committee that um, part of what they were considering when you talk of 5% or even 3% is that that sum is part of a, a sum that is larger than the national budget. It's basically the sum that comes out of the international oil company's investment. So when you talk of 5%, 10%, it's, it's a, you know, so it's, it's more than maybe we have dedicated to um, some of our, uh, do you say, education or health, maybe not as much, but almost approaching that. So we're not necessarily looking at a small sum here. Does that set any context for you at all? Yes. What is that person analyzing? Was he debating with me? Was he debating with me? Like a professor who came from the University of Lagos to debate with me about dredging of River Niger. You want to dredge our river without environmental impact assessment? Seven senior advocates of Nigeria face my lawyer, Femi Falano, in Benin High Court. You want to dredge? They are giving this mathematics, childish mathematics, they can argue in a society like Nigeria. You want to dredge our river without environmental impact assessment? You want to sink us before our time? Outside that, we will not allow any dredging if our seaports are not working. If our seaports are not working, we will not allow our waterway from Wari to give seaport to anybody in this country. And we stop Abasha that all water and land to all water and land belong to government is on piece of paper. We, the job people, are the owner of our water. Come and manage us and control us inside our water. Well, the best the joy, the joy gods of war, the best of Sopel and Benkuru, we disgrace you there. And it's happened, no tragedy. So if you are saying that ten percent, if they give ten percent to the communities and all that. That the Nigeria budget is this and that. Who is he debating? Please bring him, let us debate. When I petition or put a panel that Shell and IGP, all the oil workers, should be arrested and taken to a United Nations tribunal for trial because of genocide of gas. Madam, do you know how much gas is given to the Nigerian budget? The gas that they are wasting and exporting and using it to fly into our brain. Do you know how much is going into the Nigerian budget? Those who are enjoying the profit of Gas are not the Niger Deltans. People who are sitting down in Abuja using laptop to transfer money. Okay, Comrade Eva, we are due for a break. And a lot of people watching you are saying, they are wondering, you're asking people to come back home, they'll be disgraced. No, we that. want our children. No, Eva, please, sorry, sorry, that is not it. We want them to come. That. We want to ask them what happened. I would, I would ask you that They're in the assembly, dear, what when happened? When we return. You're watching Newsday. Stay with us. <laughs> Many thanks for joining us. You are still watching Newsday here on the Raj News Channel. And we have with us in our Lagos studios, Comrade Joseph Eva, a former Niger Delta activist and coordinator of the Job Monitoring Group. We've been discussing the proposed petroleum industry bill. Thank you so much, Comrade, for staying with us. Uh, Thank before you. that break, I was asking you to clarify because some people watching may be drawing in inference and conclusion from what you're saying. Uh, the deputy president of the Nigerian Senate, Ovio Magege, is from the Niger Delta region. The minister of state for petroleum resources, Timmy Perisiva, is from the Niger Delta region. Uh, there were public hearings held on this proposed bill. You have lawmakers in the two chambers from the region. Why did the host community wait till this point to be demanding 10% or nothing? Well, over the time, they demanded for 10%. And they continue to insist. And you know, our society is not like the Yoruba society. Where those who are at the federal level will come and consult their fathers. Those who were in government before them. If the, if the National Assembly members has visited Chief Vicky Clark, Chief Osford, and visited um, other prominent leaders who are in the government, previous government and all that, and those who walk out of the National uh, Conference of Obasanjo, they will give them the idea to intimidate the National Assembly members to abide by the host community's demand. But, you know, our people, 
especially those who just come into power and they just the power you see them they are more than in fact some of them even behave as if they are bigger than god because of the poverty from our area if they have been consulting we will not get this disgrace publicly these elders who walk out of the national conference and the national conference of us not collapse we give them the idea to walk out of the national assembly after seeing the secret of what will come out openly before now they would have embarrassed the national assembly and i tell you if the national assembly niger delta uh, lawmakers walk out of the national assembly for two hours nigeria will be shaking will be shivering but they don't know the power they don't have the power comrade ever um that is unfortunate does what you're saying not then illustrate the point that as a people, you're not necessarily speaking with one voice, which then brings us back to the issue of mismanagement of funds. I know you were provoked by that, uh, you know, um, someone that being brought off, but it's a valid point. What will be done differently if you were given 10%, seeing as it could still be mismanaged and essentially be watered down the hole? You cannot, there is no area in this world in which people will not complain about mismanage, even in America. Even the Obamacare, people will complain. And along the line, you continue to use what you learn from lessons and use that one to assist yourself. The country today, we know that some regions are more advanced than others. Is that not why there is free education and other areas because of what I will or what did? So everything cannot, at the same time, we cannot say because uh, some people are misbehaving with the 5% or 2% we give to them. So for that reason, we should fold our hand. Anybody who blackmail us with that, Today, look at the bandit problem. Look at the bandit problem in the north. Look at the fallen near asthma problems in the north. Everywhere we have problem. To the extent that a government official, shamelessly, can come and compare asthma bandits with spare parts. <laughs> with spare part dealers. Can you imagine? Then because he, he compare spare parts to bandits. Bandits that are killing his children, kidnapping his children, raping his mother. Is coming childishly to compare. Then you say we should fold our hand because he has he has compared uh, bandits, as men with uh, spare part dealer. We should keep quiet. We will not keep quiet. Despite the challenges we have, we will continue to insist that we know we know what is right, and we want that what is right to happen. How can Niger Delta people that produce people like Okotiabo, people like Dapabri, in their time shaking Nigeria, met in London? and make Nigerians all equal partners in this century. Now, the same people from that region will now be zombies to some people that we are using our resources to take care of them. We cannot accept that. That is what we are insisting. There is no even you and your husband and your children. There is always opinion, divided opinion. But at the end of the day, like what the Bible says, come, let us reason together. You must come and sit down and reason together. Okay. And that brings me to this question, because uh, the National Assembly will be setting up a committee of the whole to look at the 3% to 5% by both chambers of the National Assembly. Should the National Assembly go with any of those figures, what would the host communities do? Uh, is there a gathering storm over the relative peace being enjoyed, enjoyed in the uh, Niger Delta region at the moment? From the way you're speaking, uh, you say it's 10% or nothing, but it seems to have gone past that stage. So what next? Well, we are now talking to their conscience. We are appealing to their conscience. If they want this country to be united, these are the injustices that are causing separatist movements. These are the injustices that are causing separatist movements. And you cannot suppress and oppress people. People who are fighting for their monthly salary, if they meet people who are fighting for their survival, you will see the difference. We are politely talking to the Nigerian nation to have conscience. If your people, we don't threaten. But our natural way is there. We that talk with fish, you that talk with other resources or uh, natural resources, you cannot come to our area to intimidate us. For giving us 3% or 5%, you are in so Forget about our children. Who you will give ice cream and, and uh, 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 chocolate, and when they lick it, they will endorse whatever. If you try that one in our environment, it cannot work. We are not threatened. But the moment you continue to provoke people 
instead of bringing bringing unity instead of to bringing issues that will bring about unity you are you are provoking the people to the next generation how can we unite and stay together why i am just telling you how abasha government military government i saw a dredging map i said what is all this i was the spokesman of the john national congress i said this insult we cannot keep it for the time for our children to come and see even in our grave they will ask us what did you do that this nonsense insult come to us they will tell us our children will ask us in the grave so i stopped the dredging i went to my lawyer Femi Falano. come and help the john nation stop this dredging and if the dredger come to our area we handle the rest. Today, there is no dredging from Wadi to provide seaport somewhere. When our Cocoa Port seaport, Sapele, Brutu Port are all dead, you want to build new ports using our waterway. What is all this insult? Container will come from Holland, London, pass through Wadi, pass through Pakama, pass through Bomandi, Bekbo, and go to the north. What of our seaports? So I stop it. And told Abasha, all land and water belong to government is on piece of paper. Come to our waterway with any force you have. So we want to be united in this country. Don't provoke people to come up with separatist agenda. This separatist agenda that is causing tension and all that, the injustice, it is time for us to make sure that these things are amended. We are all human beings. Okay. Thank you so much, Comrade Joseph Eva for giving us your frank opinion on where things stand. We hope things can be resolved amicably. We wish you all the best. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you, sir.